welcome to the 2025 offseason here with the Cincinnati Reds franchise. Again, 2025 wasn't great. 76 wins, 86 losses. I'm willing to just move past it and move on to year number three of this franchise mode. Somehow, some way, the Seattle Mariners are the World Series champions. They beat the Dodgers in seven. If you're curious what the Cubs did, they won the NLTS against the Diamondbacks, but then dropped in the NLCS to the Dodgers. That's odd. The Mariners win the World Series. I don't think that's going to happen anytime in the near future in real life, I'll be honest. But let's go over our team. TJ Friedel, the power numbers in 2025 was crazy. He hit 28 of them, doubling his total last season. Matt McLean was good like normal. Ellie De La Cruz showed off the power with 30 home runs. Average went down a little bit, but it's fine. Xavier Isaac will likely go back down to AAA next season. I just think, again, he needs more time. He kind of got rushed into that spot. Will Benson took a step back in 2025. I don't know what the future holds for him. Tyler Stevenson's been so mid, man. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we can do better though at catcher, so he might stick around as well. Spencer Steer had a very good 2025, batting 293, and he hit 17 home runs as well. Esteri Ruiz, bad 254. Again, it did solid as a platoon guy. Nolvi Marte, I think I'm done with. I mean, what are we doing here? He's 23, I get it, but I think if we're gonna capitalize off his trade value, it's gonna be right now. Sal Stewart as a guy who might find himself in AAA to start the year next year, but could be an easy candidate to get promoted to the big leagues. Stewart Fairchild wasn't great in 2025, better 205, don't know what to say. Austin Hendrick, he's just not that guy. We'll go to the pitchers in just a moment here, but folks, if you haven't yet though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for some more Reds franchise mode here on the channel every single day. Martin Valenzuela, uh, ERA of four wasn't horrible. Abbott had his worst season to date in the pros. Uh, Hunter Green at 3.67 ERA, by far his best season and he was the best pitcher on this Reds team as well. Nick Lodolo was serviceable, 4.34 ERA. I think he did enough to earn himself another season here as a starter in the rotation. And Drew Thorpe, I think again, will likely be a AAA name as we look to improve the rotation a little bit by moving on from Thorpe, at least for now, and getting a guy who can fill in for one season. Kumar Rocker, again, going back down to AAA, 5.85 ERA wasn't great. Rhett Louder still hasn't gotten the call to the pros. I think it'll happen soon. We'll see. Karen Shack, very serviceable at the pen, 3.48 ERA. Andrew Moore, likely not going to be back in the bigs anytime soon. Same with Justin Brule. Mason Miller is going to be one of these guys who's probably going to be in the bullpen for a while. I just like his stuff. I know he had the ERA of five, but him and Gregory Soto both have nasty stuff. I think we're going to keep them both around for a very long time. And same with the closer, Camilo Duvall. Had his best year in the major leagues with the Reds last season, finally getting him away from San Francisco. Some other guys to note, Christian Encarnacion Strand. I've talked about the dilemma before with CES. He just does not progress well in this game. I think we might have to move on. Talked about it in game 162 yesterday. Daniel Hudson, if he's sticking around for another season, I'm going to keep the guy around. He gave up one run in 18 innings. I want to keep him around. I think Hudson can bring a lot of value to our bullpen, even with the low overall. So that kind of does it with all the players here on this roster. Look at some free agency um, negotiations with the guys already on our team. I'm completely fine with giving Gregory Soto a somewhat big deal um, just to keep him around for five years. We can only trade him. And same with Daniel Hudson. I'll give him a one-year contract worth $1.6 million to remain in the bullpen. Those guys should be sticking around. On to the free agency pool. Zach Gallon's the big pitching uh, prize. I don't think I'm going to go after Gallon. There is a position player I would like instead. Antonis hit free agency after tra getting traded from the Reds. The catchers, eh. You got Vladdy at first base. You got Brandon Jury and Luis Arise at second. Third, Nick Senzel. Bo Bichette leads the shortstop. Teoscar Hernandez in the outfield, along with Marcelo Zuna, Kyle Schwarber. There are some guys in this free agency pool, man. It is pretty stacked. Jock Peterson's back out here. Of course, we traded him midseason. Cedric Mullins, but that's who I want. Kyle Tucker. The Astros aren't giving him the best of deals, and look at that. He's been playing really well for them. He's always been a solid outfielder. I'm willing to spend here. $132 million over five seasons for Kyle Tucker to make him the guy in Cincinnati, take him away from the Astros. He's only 29 years old, finally hitting free agency. We are willing to give him that bag. We're trying to get the second highest rated player in this entire free agency. And also, I'm gonna try to get a lefty to compliment Gregory Soto in Matt Strom. He's a 78 overall. Thinking about some other guys, but really Strom's the first guy I want to add to the bullpen. And there you go. 
didn't take him very long to think about it. Kyle Tucker immediately signs on with the Reds. I said in the last video, we're not rebuilding. We are simply reloading here in the offseason. We're willing to spend because, again, we got to get back to that point we were at two seasons ago. Kyle Tucker is the new starting right fielder of the Cincinnati Reds, and we're not done. We're trying to get Lane Thomas as well. We need multiple outfielders. We're trying to, you know, keep TJ Friedel in center and add two guys in the corners. Lane Thomas is the other guy I want. $26 million over five years. I feel like that's a pretty cheap contract for a guy like Thomas. And also, why not? I'm going to try to get TJ Antone back. We just traded him, but again, we got the prospects out of him. And we're going to try to get him right back. $26 million over four years. Again, willing to spend. I don't care. I'm going to try to get Antone back on the team, who's very good for us. I want to see if I can get him back. Because right now, that's kind of what our bullpen and our rotation looks like. Again, you want to move Thorpe out of there, and you want to get some better guys, I think, in the pen as well. Chris Paddock signs with the St. Louis Cardinals. Okay, he's going to join the division. Don't really care. Not too scared of that move. Um, as we look, Drew Rasmussen going to get moved for Mitch Keller. So Keller will go on over to the Rays. Rasmussen over to Pittsburgh and the Cardinals get another starting pitcher they will get Dylan Cease so they add both Cease and Paddock in this offseason nothing yet going on for the Reds as of note we still got the contract on Lane Thomas extended or offered and same with TJ Antone Pete Alonzo was someone I was actually going to think about trading for but instead Alonzo going to get moved from St. Louis over to the desert in Arizona TJ Antone declines the deal Edwin Diaz going to go from New York to Pittsburgh he gets traded for a and Priester and Ji Huan Bay. Here's the draft lottery. We have the projected 12th pick in the draft. And after the lottery, we will have pick number. Can we show it? My goodness. This shouldn't take that long. We're going to have number 12. That was very anticlimactic. Okay, Lane Thomas's top deal is now from the Kansas City Royals. So, with that being said, we are going to give him an even bigger contract. It's still not like crazy huge but still we're gonna try to get lane rule five draft i'm actually going to utilize this there's a guy in this draft who i think we can make use of and it's michael kopech i get it the era hasn't been great he's been good in real life so far for the white Sox. i think it makes sense 78 overall pitcher of course the rule five draft you just got to keep the guy on the active roster i'm cool with it kopech's not gonna be starting games for us he's gonna be a reliever lane thomas chooses less money to go to kansas city instead of coming down to Cincinnati. He's going to take five mil a year when he could have got, okay, like six and a half, but still, why would you take that? I don't know. He wants to play in Kansas City with Bobby Witt. Instead, we will pivot to one Teoscar Hernandez, who arguably might be a better hitter than Lane Thomas. I thought, you know, I think Lane is an all around better player personally, but I'm not against going after a guy in Teoscar Hernandez. Yes, we could go after someone like Max Kepler. We could go after Michael Conforto. And I did think about these names, but I will take Teoscar Hernandez instead. Yes, I would have liked Lane with the youth, but instead I'll go with the 33 year old in Teoscar Hernandez. I will give him four years until he's 37. It makes sense. We get the rest of his prime. I don't think the Dodgers are going to contest that too much. We should be able to get Teoscar Hernandez on the squad. We are now into the year of 2026 in January. January will send to January 26th, and I think we should have Teoscar at this point, and we will. So yes, Teoscar Hernandez has joined the team. It's fine. Lane wanted to go to Kansas City. We will take Teoscar instead, but we're not done yet. We are not done. We are still going to make more moves. Zach Gallen, again, was the big prize. He will go to Minnesota. Fine by me. I don't really care. The Novi Marte trade. Now, this is what's being offered in the trade finder. I don't know how to keep this somewhat realistic because Novi Marte is good, but he batted 190 last season, but he's still 24 and he's still got all the potential in the world. So I don't entirely know how to address this. Bryce Harper pops up and man, I am intrigued. Now, I don't think Novi Marte for Bryce Harper straight up is realistic. I think we'd have to add Christian Encarnacion Strand, and I think we'd have to add Jackson Ferris as well, who we got at the trade deadline. And I get, you know, and we'll be the show saying that we are losing this trade. We should be able to command more. Like, I could go out and command trade Turner, and they'd probably give it to us. I don't think that's realistic. I think these three guys for Bryce is realistic. Now, Harper's a first baseman. The Phillies, you know, have not been back to the World Series. I think it makes sense. Now, what could we get for the package of Marte and Carnacion, Strain and Ferris? We could get some guys. We could get James Wood. We could get Seiya Suzuki. We could get, you know, Freddie Freeman. There are names we could go out and get. 
But I think at the end of the day, we need a first baseman and we need a franchise type player in Bryce Harper. We are going to take him instead of playing things out with the prospects. So that's your blockbuster. We have gotten one of the faces of the sport in Bryce Harper and he will be the starting first baseman of the Cincinnati Reds. Is that an overpay for a first baseman? I don't know. But it's for Bryce Harper. We don't know what future we are going to get out of Novi Marte. Christian Encarnacion Strand looked like he was never going to develop. And we traded one of our five pitching prospects in Jackson Ferris. I think it's a deal that both teams win on. And I'm glad that we get a guy in Bryce Harper on our team. And now this is your lineup. And I decided, you know what? I think we can keep Will Benson. We need a DH. Benson can hit against rights. And when we see left-handed pitching, okay, we'll just bring in Estri Ruiz to play the outfield and the DH can be probably Teoscar Hernandez. Like it makes sense, right? Spencer Steer's gonna have to play third base for us, which we're not great defensively there, but it's fine. I think we can manage it. Um, yeah, and then this again, this lineup would require us to go out and make Esther Ruiz not the DH, but make him the center fielder of this team. We'd switch things around to get Teoscar Hernandez in that DH spot because he's the worst fielder. So we kept some of our guys. I think it makes sense. Now, the last spot I need on this team is a starting pitcher. I'm not starting Drew Tharp. I'm just not doing it. We have Chase Petty. Again, we have a, you know, a surplus of starting pitching prospects. Him and Marshall Smalls, who's 22 years old and 54 overall and a potential. I'm not, I don't want to wait for that. I think he can be good like in four years when he's 26. I think we go out and get a guy like Jose Urquidy, who's been very good for the Houston Astros. And it makes sense. Urquidy joins the pitching rotation and now it will go Green, Abbott, Urquidy, Lodolo, Valenzuela. And folks, that'll do it for the offseason. Thank God for watching episode number 35 of the Cincinnati Reds Franchise Mode here on MLB The Show 24. If you are excited for opening day, make sure to hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button as well. We'll be back for opening day 2026 tomorrow night. Again, folks, thank you for watching. And Mamba, forever.